Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In this video, we will learn how to design the peak detector circuit. Now, many times in electrical and electronic circuits, it is required to measure the peak value of the input signal. And the peak detector circuit can be used for this purpose. So let us understand how we can design this peak detector circuit. The simple peak detector circuit can be designed just by using the diode and capacitor. And the circuit over here will detect the positive peak value of the input signal. And the negative peak of the signal can be detected by just reversing the direction of this diode. So let us understand how this circuit can detect the peak value. Now let us say some input signal is applied to this circuit. And for a moment, let us assume that this diode over here is an ideal diode. And there is a no charge across this capacitor. Now as soon as some positive input is applied to the circuit, the diode will start conducting and the capacitor will get charged through this path and it will get charged up to the peak value of the input signal. Now after reaching the peak value, the input signal is start reducing and at that time this diode will get reverse bias because the voltage at the anode is less than the voltage at the cathode terminal. So during that time, the capacitor will hold the peak value of the input signal. Now this diode will again start conducting whenever the input signal crosses the previous peak voltage. So up to this point, the capacitor will hold the voltage and then after, once this diode becomes forward biased, this capacitor will get charged up to the new peak value. Now after reaching the peak value, even if the input signal reduces, then also this capacitor will hold the peak value. So this is how this circuit detects the peak voltage. Now so far we have assumed that the diode is an ideal diode but actually there will be some voltage drop across this diode and because of that the output will be slightly less than the expected value. Now this circuit is good enough for getting the rough approximation of the peak value but suppose if you want to accurately measure the peak value then instead of this normal diode the precision diode or the super diode should be used. And we have already talked about this circuit in the previous video of the precision rectifier. So this circuit behaves like an ideal diode. And just by connecting the capacitor at the output terminal, it will become the peak detector circuit. And it works exactly the same way as the previous circuit, except the fact that there is a no voltage drop across this diode. Now to measure the peak voltage across this capacitor, some finite amount of load has to be connected at the output terminal. Now this load can be either an external load resistor or the input impedance of the circuit which is just connected after this peak detector circuit or it can be an input impedance of some data acquisition system. So because of this load, the capacitor will get discharged through this resistor whenever this diode is non-conducting. So instead of holding the voltage, this capacitor is discharging through this load resistor. So to avoid that problem, the RC time constant of the circuit should be very large. So if the input signal is periodic signal, in that case, this RC time constant should be at least 10 times more than the time period of the signal. Similarly, whenever the capacitor is charging, it should follow the input signal immediately. So the RC time constant during the charging of this capacitor should be much less than the time period of the signal. Or we can say that during that time, the RC time constant should be less than the one tenth of the time period of the signal. And here, RD is the forward resistance of this diode. So by following these conditions, the discharging of the capacitor can be reduced. But many times, it is not possible to control the load resistance, particularly whenever the output of the circuit is given to some other circuit. Because at that time, input impedance of the other circuit is not known. So in such instances, it is good to use the buffer circuit before the load resistance. So here this buffer circuit provides very high input impedance and it prevents this capacitor from discharging through this load resistance. And suppose if you want to reset this circuit, then switch can also be connected across this capacitor to manually discharge it. So even transistor can be used as a switch to control the discharging of this capacitor. And as shown in the figure, the switching action of the transistor can be controlled using the controller. So by using the buffer, we can avoid the discharging of this 
capacitor but still there is a problem with this circuit now if you observe the circuit whenever this diode is non conducting at that time the op amp will operate in the open loop condition and that will lead the op amp into the negative saturation for example let us say the capacitor over here is holding the peak value of the input signal now if the input signal goes below this peak value then the diode will become reverse biased and the op amp will operate in the open loop condition as there is no feedback from output to the input side now the negative input terminal of this op amp will be at a peak voltage and the positive input terminal is at input voltage which is slightly less than this peak voltage so the op amp will go into the negative saturation now even if this input signal goes above this peak voltage then also the op amp will take some time to come out of this saturation and that basically depends on the slew rate of the op amp so that will limit the operating frequency range of this peak detector and because of that this circuit will not be able to detect or follow the fast changing signal and this problem can be avoided by using this modified peak detector so let us understand how this circuit works now initially this capacitor is fully discharged so there is a no voltage across this capacitor and as it is connected to the buffer circuit so the same voltage will also appear at this terminal and similarly the same voltage will also appear at this terminal because initially all the nodes are at zero potential now whenever some finite input voltage is applied to this op amp at that time the output of the op amp will become positive so this diode d1 will become reverse biased and this diode d2 will become forward biased and the capacitor will get charged up to the peak voltage through this path now here as this diode d1 is non conducting and here we are assuming that the no current is flowing into the op amp terminal so the no current will flow through this resistor r as well so whatever voltage which appears at this node the same voltage will also appear at this node and here through this resistor r there is a negative feedback in the given circuit now let us see the second case whenever the input voltage goes below the peak voltage so at that time this diode d2 will become reverse bias and the outer loop of this circuit will get broken now the negative input terminal of this op amp will be at a peak voltage while the positive input terminal over here is slightly less than the peak voltage so momentarily the output of the op amp will become negative so because of that this diode d1 will become forward biased and it provides the feedback to this op amp circuit and that prevents this op amp from going into the negative saturation so whatever voltage which is applied at the input terminal the same voltage will appear at the output terminal and in this way the op amp is not going into the negative saturation and at the same time as this diode d2 is non conducting so it prevents the capacitor from the discharging so in this way this circuit will be able to respond to the fast signals now of course the response time of the circuit also depends upon the response time of the diode as well as the response time of the op amp and moreover that it also depends upon the charging time of the capacitor but if these components are fast enough in that case this particular circuit will be able to respond to the fast signals while the circuit which we have seen previously will not be able to respond to the fast signals and for a very high speed peak detection the short key diodes are preferred over the signal diodes because these short key diodes have a very quick response time so this is all about the peak detection circuit so i hope in this video you understood how to design the peak detector circuit so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos